Today I'm gonna answer a question from Lucky. Well, he writes, thank you for sharing. Please, I would like to know how to get a PhD scholarship in Brazil. He continues, you can also share life of a PhD student in Brazil. Well, Lucky, I believe that you've not watched a video of mine talking about the scholarships. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it all the same, but I'm gonna leave also the link in the description of this video so that you can watch and if you have more questions, the doors are always open, okay? So let's see. You can secure a scholarship here in Brazil in two forms. I'm not saying they are exceptionally the two uh, ways you can. There are other alternatives, right? But for the foreign students, I think they are two best forms of coming here. The first is the PEG. Since you've watched the PEG, that's why you're thanking me for sharing the video, it's the postgraduate form of it, okay? And you also have the GCAP, which is a very new form of coming to study the postgraduate level. In my own uh, opinion, I think the best form of coming is the GCAP mobility program. How do you come through the PEG-PG? The same application that you do for the PEG-G, that is going to your embassy, talking to them, you know, discussing with them and showing your own interest. They do the applications there. Here in this channel, we don't get involved in that. We don't have the power. We just give you the information, right? So some of you guys that are saying, okay, help me to get an admission, it's not possible, okay? It's beyond our own power. And one thing uh, that is interesting about Brazil is that you don't need some intermediaries. You don't need someone to be there. You just put the papers and they function for you, right? So somehow we are scared because we might not get through the process. But uh, uh, I attest to you that uh, if you want to apply and uh, the process says then just provide those documents and, you know, go and chill, have a good time. Don't worry about it. Just let it go. In case you don't get it the first time, you can try it the second time. I think coming through the GCAP is a little bit more secure, more sophisticated. It's modern. It's something that uh, be began some few years ago, although the idea has been there since 2008. When you read the history of GCAP, you see that it is a group of universities within the Brazilian territory that decide to you know, form a committee, a group, to relate with uh, foreign universities and it evolved to what it is today. They are not trying to bring students from outside so that they can strengthen their scientific community here. And they also want to export science to the rest of the world. They want to help, you know, developing countries. And uh, that's why the program is really hot. It is at its second edition now. And the application of the GCAP is exclusively online. You do the application, you submit the required documents, and you wait for the answer. There are specific numbers of slots, and from my own evaluation, there are far more slots in the GCAP than in the PEG. Usually, the embassies know the numbers of slots. I'm not at that power to tell you how many you have for your own country. I don't know the criteria of evaluation. In a summary, I'm telling you, that if you want to apply, try to apply through the GCAP. Because when you come through the GCAP, you automatically have a stipend. The scholarship is, is secured there. You are not coming and then you kind of doubtful, okay, am I gonna receive uh, a monthly payment so that I can maintain myself here in Brazil or not? Talking about the life experience of a PhD student, <laughs> it's actually been wonderful in general because you have understanding teachers or lecturers i must call them with respect of course Brazil actually has a very well formed lecturers in general okay in fact i started feeling that at the graduate level you know in my own opinion where i really found it a little bit difficult uh, during my masters because i went in without a scholarship right i'm not coming in as a PEC pg student not even as a GCAP student. I competed with the Brazilians. So when I went in, I went in like a Brazilian and I had to compete for the scholarships too. And you know, for the Brazilian students, you have limited scholarships. Most especially if the caps 
of that university is low. There is a video where I've explained a little bit about the caps. It's the grading of the universities. So when you have higher number of caps, you have higher availability of scholarship. So it means that when you go to a program where the caps is high, you have higher chances of getting scholarship as a Brazilian, right? So I went to a relatively low, not very low caps, right? And when I got there, there were about two or three scholarships for about 12 students. So you had to compete. And, uh, you know, I went in uh, not at a very good placement. I didn't have very good curriculum. So I didn't secure the scholarship in the first year. I was working and studying at the same time. Man, it was really tough. Well, let's talk about the doctorate level. Doctorate level started at the beginning of the pandemic. I remember I was called, I think, few weeks before the pandemic. I was sent a letter. I was on the supplementary list because I've spoken in one of my videos that my curriculum wasn't good. I didn't have publications. And for you to, you know, get a, an upper hand in the placements here in Brazil, you need to have a good curriculum, publishing articles, participating in events, research. Most of these productivities, they count a lot, not just your scores, your grades. You know, you are, your CGPA is 5.0 and you have zero productivity. That is nothing, absolutely nothing, okay? So you have to produce something. And uh, that was my situation. I didn't have productivity. so. I was on the supplementary list. Where I was accepted is one of the best chemical engineering courses in Brazil. It has the maximum points. That's the caps is maximum. And you know, I was really surprised and happy at the same time. Man, it wasn't easy. I would become a doctor. All of a sudden, you know, I said, wow, how did I start? I started remembering my life in the village in Bochi State. Well, you know that guy that just wanted to guarantee his breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all of a sudden he is dreaming of becoming a doctor, you know. <laughs> the feeling was really great, you know. I was sitting and looking at that email, you know, and then imagining myself. I said, crawling or whatever, I'm going to finish up this project. I'm going to go to and do my doctorate, and then whatever I might face there, there is no problem. So I started, you know, making up my things. I spoke with my wife, you know, it's a little bit difficult because you have a family and you have to go to another city. And then, you know, it was really hard. And all of a sudden the pandemic hit. I think I was supposed to travel that week. So the top university started closing up. And then I think about two days later, I received an email from the university where I study my doctorate. I received an email that they had suspended all the activities, that they were transferring everything online. Well, to me, it wasn't kind of uh, a relief, yeah? Because it was a very difficult period. You know, the pandemic was really hard here in Brazil. And, uh, but at the same time, I was, um, you know, in a position of not comfortable with travel. I wasn't prepared to travel at that time, right? So uh, I ended up, you know, staying at home and uh, doing most of the studies here at home. I think the biggest challenge was the contact I didn't have because usually you get clues from your colleagues. You are in the same class. Uh, maybe you guys are researchers, you know, talking about some things. Okay, this guy brings an idea the other one tells you, oh, if you do this, this happens. So this was one of the biggest challenges that I had. And uh, it took me a long time to discover some uh, answers to some errors that I was getting, you know, weeks. I spent weeks, months, you know, doing some, some little things that I could learn in few hours, you know. So it was really crazy. Uh, at this point, I want to talk about the project that I developed. Okay, I, I work with uh, computational fluid dynamics. I study the, the behavior of the particles, that is the dro droplets emitted, you know, uh, during 
human respiratory activities like sneezing. I have two supervisors who aid me with this project and uh, this, the experience has been wonderful. It was really a very great challenge. Even though I had worked with uh, CFD at the master's level, I was working with another software and uh, everything was different, everything was new. I was working with a different model, so I had to like start everything from the beginning. And uh, So I kind of found it very tough. You know, I spent a lot of time, you know, uh, walking, you know, extra hours. So uh, somehow I got stressed up. Uh, at one point, I was thinking of uh, impossibility, right? Not I personally giving up, but uh, it was like, it was impossible for me. So I was like, uh, can I, uh, would I be able to like do this or not? That doubt was like ringing all the time. But you know, that spirit, where are you coming from? You try to think of your past, you know, where you're coming from, what you've faced, the challenges, and then you say, what? This is just a small step. You keep moving, man. So uh, I always have motivation, always, always have motivation. That's why I tell people, okay, if you see me not doing something, it's because it's beyond my capacity, not because I have given up doing that. So that's me. And you know, with time, things started working on fine. You know, I started getting uh, a little bit comfortable with the modeling and uh, started writing up some things, one or two things, you know. And uh, also, I went to the university after the pandemic. Talking about the subjects, if you are coming for your doctorate, maybe outside, you might have to do some subjects. There are, you know, obligatory subjects that you find. Usually, in the chemical engineering, you have four of them. And then you have, like, other alternatives because you have to kind of uh, complete a certain number of credits right so during my masters I had done the same subjects and uh, there is what we call aprovetamento that is the core obligatory subjects I had already done them and then we did the aprovetamento and after which I did some few subjects so that I could complement the number of credits in terms of subject it was soft if you are moving from master's to doctorate and you are changing, you might have to do all the courses related to that particular field. So you are coming from chemistry to chemical engineering. You have to do all the core chemical engineering courses. Chemical kinetics, thermodynamics, you have to do transport phenomenon and mathematical methods or that's numerical methods. <laughs> then you have complementary subjects. Like, uh, for instance, there was something that had to do with uh, article writing. I really enjoyed that particular subject. It teaches you how to organize your articles, you know, how to present them, you know, from the uh, abstract to the conclusion, everything standardized. And I remember that there was an article that I developed in that particular subject. I submitted that article. It was accepted in a very high factor journal. I think uh, there is something about uh, these Brazilian universities, you know, the standards. I really like their standards. Even in the small cities, don't underestimate them, right? If you go to the small cities, you think, okay, you are studying in a very small city and uh, you think that their standards are very low. They are not low. Uh, the standards of the federal universities in general, they have a very good standard. So. It's been wonderful, the experience, you know, uh, I went there, I met the people, you know, I met one or two people, and from that meeting, I was able to accelerate some things. If you are here to study, please don't isolate yourself. Try to work with uh, people who are within, you know, if you have a problem of maybe uh, associating, that comes with a cost, the low productivity, uh, you become a little bit stuck. Uh, with simple issues things that could have been oh don't put it that way do it that way i've seen that right i discovered something uh, after like four years in in just few, few seconds like i work with a cluster i do all the models on my computer here and the, the university has a cluster where i do all my simulations so i take the model and i send it to the cluster and there I try to you know do the calculations so what happens is that the cluster has a resolution of the screen 
you know, reduce. So somehow, when I put the, uh, when I try to do the configuration, it doesn't give me a full screen. And when I scroll, there is a part that doesn't show, and I need that part, right? So I battle with that, and sometimes I have to bring it back to my computer, reconfigure it, and then send it back, right? And you know, there was a day I was talking to my teacher, and then he said, "Well, let's do this. We open something." And then he did some little configuration and everything started working, you know. So I was like, wow, it's good to work in groups, you know. It's good not to isolate yourself. So when you come, when you're studying, try to mix with other people. Try to talk to other people. If there is a difference, try to iron out the difference, okay. Uh, there are people who, of course, you wouldn't meet, mix together. But at least have a meeting point where you guys can, you know, live in harmony. See if you can exchange ideas, you know. Uh, all the time information come, all the time. So uh, there are some things that you uh, discover, you know, from those casual discussions, <laughs> right? Uh, so this is basically the experience. And uh, see you in the next video.